Hi, good morning and welcome. This is Seek Sustainable Japan, our monthly series. Uh, we missed one in October, um, but we are catching up. Now it's November 1st in Japan. We almost made one in October, but same kind of season. I'm JJ Walsh in Hiroshima, joined by... Hi, I'm Tova Kinoka in Yokohama. Now, how is the weather in Yokohama? You had an update on a view of Mount Fuji. What is going on? I know, right? So this is a picture taken from just up the hill from my house yesterday morning. So 31st of October and very lovely, as you can see, but no snow on Mount Fuji. And this is the long, uh, the latest since records began 130 years ago that there has not been a snow cap on Fuji-san. So, um, yes, it looks very beautiful still, but this is a worrying sign, right? It's, you know, today, 1st of November, it should be covered in snow. This is disrupting the, the whole ecosystem and the cycles that, you know, rely on that. So absolutely. Yeah. And I mentioned before we went live, if we were talking in October, still two weeks ago, my glasses would be steaming up because it was such a hot October. Yeah. I had guests who I was giving tours to and I had canceled July, August, knowing that was going to be too hot. But yeah. September and October was still too hot. Yeah. Um, so I had guests saying, yeah, if I come back to Japan, I'm not coming between June and October. Yeah. yeah. That is, I mean, that's our new reality. And that's that's really caused by climate change and global warming, which is real. And we need to start finding ways to mitigate these problems, right? Exactly. Sooner rather than later, we are so behind on this. Um, and uh, <clears throat> to be, yeah. To me, it's incredible. We're even still having this conversation about, you know, should we be doing something? And, and you know, companies are still umming and ahhing about where should they set their goals and governments are still flip-flopping on things. It's like, come on, the signs are all around us. We need to accelerate this. Absolutely. And this week, we will maybe have a new president in America who doesn't believe in climate change and supports the fossil fuel industry. So huge changes ahead. We just had a new government change kind of in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole government in Japan is kind of at a standstill at the moment because the ruling party didn't get a majority. So we're still waiting to see where Japan stands on climate yeah progress or lack thereof um, yes. in incentives and how mm -hmm. we're going forward with energy. All of those topics we're going to have to cover, I think, next month because it's still yeah. kind of flux, right? Exactly, exactly. It's just wait and see at the moment. And we don't have time to wait. So uh, very frustrating. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now we had some good news. A good friend of both of ours, uh, James, Ho James Hollow, his company Fabric, in Tokyo, they are now B certified. Now, Tova, yes. can you kind of give us a quick overview? What does that mean, B certification? So B Corp is a certification that measures the company's um, social and environmental impact and uh, sort of they it's very very rigorous to, to get the certification is really hard actually so fabric um have really put a huge amount of effort into this you have to be really transparent you have to actually make legal commitments by changing your company's um sort of corporate governance so you're accountable to all stakeholders not just shareholders um you've got to really demonstrate high social environmental and um social and environmental performance um, and then you get uh, this sort of impact assessment that go through everything very very thoroughly um, so it's really a mark that a company has um, re is really taking their responsibilities towards both society and the environment very seriously and they have achieved a certain standard and then they can't just get it once and you know that's it done box ticked they've got to keep demonstrating that commitment it, they will be you know checked on and i think reassessed um in order to maintain the certification so um it's really a big thing it's a huge achievement so massive congratulations to james and all the fabric team um it's really you know very impressive Absolutely. and there was a big party to celebrate uh two nights ago. So oh, fantastic. So, it makes me so, sad yeah. when I miss out on those things because I'm so far away, but yes. I'm so happy that <laughs> um, they got it. James was so gracious. Uh, my last visit up to Tokyo, he did a bunch of these short video explanations about 
the strategies they have in place at Fabric. What are they doing to reduce waste, to support yeah. community? And it was so impressive. And he was so nice to do those short videos for me. And I think <laughs> it's a wonderful explainer, you know, yeah. like, like most leaders, maybe they're not confident enough in their strategies, but these mm -hmm. are things he talked about. His team has been working on with him. So it's not just top down. It no, really comes from his staff. It comes from the community. And yeah. I think in terms of leadership, that's such an important part of it, right? Very much. And, and also the key word you mentioned there, I think, is community. And, you know, in the, the party two nights ago, that was um, really wonderful to see. There were just people from so many different sort of areas of the sustainability kind of world, if you like, but also just lots of little local businesses um, that Fabric sort of includes in their community um, and does stuff together with they do events on you know mending and things like this and the food the, the sort of um csa loop and stuff like that so they've got an incredible community there that's growing all the time and they're so welcoming and sort of open and constantly learning from each other which is a really um sort of quite rare and just really wonderful thing to see so yeah that's good Fantastic. Um, speaking of building community and talking about diversity and inclusion, such an important part of building our international community and Japanese com community health and wellness um, is talking about uh, diversity and inclusion of LGBTQ plus uh, community. And there's a great project by Felicity Tillak and uh, mm -hmm. Tiffany Rossdale. Uh, they have finished episode one of their docu-series called We Exist. And now they're doing a Kickstarter to raise money for the episode two. And it was yeah. great talking to them on the show and hearing more about uh, why do this and the mm -hmm. learnings they've had from episode one, why do a Kickstarter, and then you know, the future vision of doing it in different areas of Japan. It's not just a topic for Tokyo. No. It's something that includes, of course, communities across Japan. Um, yeah. And they have such a great uh, way to get into those stories by doing interviews. Tiffany's going around doing interviews with key people around Japan. Yes. So it's a great project. Wonderful to hear about it. And related to that, so I know Tiffany is going to um, my daughter's school, actually, Yokohama International School here, um, also a great picture, um, to do, uh, I think, a sort of mini screening, or I'm not sure if it's mini or full, for the um, LGBTQ um, service group at the school there. Um, and it's going to be open to, to parents, teachers, um, and the students as well, and to sort of talk about um, sort of creating safe space and um, inclusive environments. So it's wonderful to see them getting out into all these different sort of sectors of society it's um you know particularly the schools and starting that sort of education the open mindset earlier um is really really important so they're doing fantastic stuff yeah it's wonderful uh they mentioned uh working with your daughter and her <laughs> school so that is fantastic yes. in the program um, oh, did i didn't realize that okay i have to go oh. watch it <laughs> <laughs> i put the link the link below wonderful um, now, yeah. Tova, you have been involved in a few interesting projects. Uh, mm -hmm. You've got one coming up, Gender Focused Investment. What's this about? Yes. So this is um, a collaboration with a really interesting organization called 2X Global. Um, so they, I believe, are based in the Netherlands, but they're kind of a member organization. They work with governments and um uh, sort of investment organizations across the world. And they have developed um, a set of uh, sort of guidelines, if you like, and they have training in, in how to apply these for companies um, to ensure that um, investments are considering the, um, the sort of the impact on gender equality. Um, and so it's, it's Again, very thorough, a um, bit like the B Corp in that sense. It's guidelines that governments can use as well as the investors themselves. And so we're going to be doing this event and it's hosted by um, LSCG, the London Stock Ex Exchange Group. Um, Tatiana, you can see there, she's um, had a long time relationship with Japan. She's based in um, the Netherlands, but she's coming over 
um, and she's the the 2x global ambassador so she'll be sort of explaining what the the principles and the certification um, is and how it can be used to really sort of drive um, more equality in investment and make sure money's getting to women as well as just the guys um, and then we've got some amazing panelists. So we've got um, Alexis Rokamura from uh, London Stock Exchange Group, but we've also got Mari Kogiso, who's an absolute force of nature in the, the investment world in, in Japan. Um, so you can see Alexis there. Um, and also Ayat Sumura with SMBC uh, Trust Bank. And again, she's, she's active, not just in the finance world, but in sort of women's leadership uh, generally in Japan as well. So I'm really happy to have them on the panel and I'm lucky enough to get to moderate the, the conversation. So really looking forward to that on the 5th of December and it's open to non-members. So if people listening are interested in gender lens um, investing and finding out more about that, then please come and join us. That's great. I've put the link below if anybody's interested to get more information and of course sign up uh, if you're in the area. Now this is, it's great to see what uh, Felicity and, and uh, Tiffany talked about mm. as allies, right? So yes. not just having uh, women talking, but having men who support women yep. and support empowering equality also yeah. talking. And yes. how having both sides is important, right? Incredibly important. Yeah. yeah, no, it's really good. And actually, just on that point, I mean, sort of, we, we hear a lot of people sort of talk about allies um, for sort of all kinds of diversity. And I think one question that came up when I was at an LGBTQ um, sort of leadership uh, event back in March or April, I think it was, um, there, there was a lot of talk on actually how do you be an ally? And it's not just um, sort of something you, you say, yes, I'm an ally, and then really don't do anything further. It's like you've got to actively um do stuff to really be able to call yourself an ally and there was a wonderful example at the fabric event um two nights ago when there was a panel discussion um men and women on the panel which was wonderful and then it got to the q a um and the first two questions were from men in the audience and then james who was moderating said okay we've had two questions from men i'd really like to um you know make sure we get a question from some women as well so just that simple act you know he could have gone on taking questions from anybody but he made that effort to call it out um and we need more of that i think that active allyship not just sort of putting it on your um you know your cv and then not doing anything about it absolutely and we see you know unfortunately gender inequality issues around the world japan is not an outlier there no, um, not in, in many legal and regulation levels japan does seem to be a little bit less right than yeah. other, other countries but we just had in this last election we had the most women elected ever in Japanese history. So we are improving, which is wonderful to see. Uh, representation is a big part of how yeah. it is ranked every year. Yeah. Gender equality global index, right? Exactly, exactly. So yes, still very slow progress, unfortunately, but it, it is progress. So yeah, we wonderful. have to appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, speaking of building community and uh, uh, Re renovating old houses. I have had the chance to talk to the amazing Danny and Evan, who have taken over some old houses made in made into guest houses on Omishima Island, which is along the Shimanami Kaido cycling route. And they just got featured by CNBC, which is major American broadcast network. And so they've gotten a lot more attention. Um, but they're doing such good work. It's not just what they're doing, mm. but again, about community. They are helping keep that community alive. They're bringing a lot of international people into um, the community, even just learning about re renovating old houses mm. and the potential to come over on a working visa, uh, bringing the right kind of new residents mm. to Japan There's and to rural areas. There's so yeah. many positive knock-on effects uh, uh, taking over abandoned farmland and doing organic farming, uh, running, you know, sustainable businesses. It is all connected to what they do. So yeah. It's wonderful to see them get some international mm -hmm. attention on this. Fantastic. No, they're doing great work. Yeah. Um, now you were involved with another interesting project, Cap Gemini. What's going on here? <laughs> so Cap Gemini, um, a very large uh, IT 
organization, uh, French, I believe. And um, Paul Betty, who's one of our, our key sort of sustainability mafia, um, as we call it, um, sort of uh, members in the, the Tokyo area, you can see on the left in the picture there. Um, so he works there and his HR director next to him there um, said they have this women in um, Capgemini um, sort of network. And this month is all about sort of highlighting that and, and sort of bringing people into talk. So um, Paul asked uh, myself and, and two other ladies to come and talk as panelists about sort of just our career as, as you know, leaders, female leaders and the, that journey and things. Um, but being Paul and being part of the sustainability mafia, um, we were all also sustainability related. So um, we managed to sneak that into there as well, even though it sort of started off as a, a conversation about women's leadership. We were, um, because we're all working in sustainability, we were able to talk about that as well. So that was really great. We've got some good questions from the audience. A lot of men in the audience as well, which was really nice to see. Back to your point about um, allyship so it was a really good conversation and the two co-panelists with me there so Tomoko um, is a meteorologist I think uh, you can see her in the center there um, the first meteorologist I've ever met I think um, I know many different scientists but she's the first meteorologist and she um, did her PhD on Arctic uh, climate the impact of climate change in the Arctic um, and in the US and then she's um, working now for a Finnish company but based in Japan um, tracking weather systems and looking at the impact uh, sort of working to with governments to be able to give warning on things like um, extreme weather events flooding and things like this wildfires um, so they have satellites that track all of that so it was really interesting hearing about her work but also she went to a really interesting college um, in Japan the sort of meteorological college and she was I think the fifth woman they'd ever had in the college um, and when she was there in her, in her cohort, basically, she was the, the only woman there. Um, and so an interesting experience, as you can imagine. Um, so it was um, wonderful to hear about that and how she'd sort of always felt she had to downplay. She felt she couldn't sort of show, express any interest in fashion or anything like that if she wanted to be taken seriously. So she said she felt she had to kind of be really boring in her words um and now working for this Finnish company she's just sort of uh, not having to worry about any of that could just be herself but really really interesting oh, wonderful person. wow that sounds amazing yeah. yeah and Yuko the other co-panelist uh so she's founder of um a company called Sustainer Seed um and so her platform connects um well it's sort of like an ecosystem if you like for any uh sustainability related companies she really wants to sort of elevate and give visibility to small organizations working in um, sustainability and startups and so on and get them on the radar radar of uh, big companies that can work with them so she's doing wonderful work there um and uh, again her journey to sort of get there has been tough she's um done a lot of uh sort of had to kick through the glass ceiling she was saying there's no knocking politely it was sort of kicking and fighting but she's doing um really important work now i think to accelerate sustainability in japan yeah oh that's wonderful to hear uh that was one of the issues in the next government well kind of ongoing government discussion mm. it's whether women can keep their name uh or right. choose, choose keep their name that's still under discussion and then uh one thing uh steph uh, felicity and tiffany talked about is certification of same-sex marriage right having yes. these legal rights for yep. diversity and inclusion is a really key part of it Absolutely. you talked about her kicking and streaming trying to get you know yeah. moved up in the company but mm -hmm. on a more impressive well more regulation includes everyone right you don't yeah. have to fight so hard as an individual if you have those basic rights right exactly exactly and actually we just had um i saw a, a post from my friend joshua a couple of i oh know yesterday on linkedin i think that we just had another sort of step um on the the progress ladder if you like for lgbtq marriage um in japan because there was a court in Tokyo that ruled that the um, current sort of lack of recognition is a violation of human rights. Um, so 
we're getting there. We're getting right. there. Oh, that's great news. I will try to add the link below if you if you can find that link to yes, share it with it. us. Thank you so much. Um, on a little bit of a switch gear, I'm always uh, thinking about new products and product design. And I've been hired by uh, JTB and the government to help develop sustainable tours in Miyajima. So I'll be training mm -hmm. local people uh, to offer these sustainable tours. Of course, we're focused on more uh, locally made products, highlighting the local trades, the artisans. Um, also, how can you avoid crowds? So try to uh, get away from the over-tourism mm. stress on locals by yeah. um, finding ways around the crowds. Not going to the top places at the busiest times is a no-brainer, right? Mm. Um, but also avoiding the crowded shopping areas at the busiest times, right? Yeah. Um, and then supporting lesser-known uh, mm -hmm. shops, which are kind of struggling to stay alive, even one block over, right? Even on yeah. the most 5 million people visit this island, only 1,500 people live there. Um, so they started this uh, tourist tax, 100 gen tax, uh, which they're putting into having refill water stations, yay, and uh, dealing with the garbage. You know, these are yeah. things that really help local people as well. Mm -hmm. But as part of the tour, highlighting these things, how yeah. does your tax help locals? And that's also good for local people because they sometimes don't know. This is not clearly advertised to them, right? right. And so yeah. it's, it's Really exciting uh, new project, and I'll be talking more about that uh, coming up in the next couple of months. Fantastic. Um, Congratulations. That's really, really wonderful yeah, news. really exciting. They'll be selling it from January, February, so we're in the development stage right now. Yeah. Um, but one thing that has really come up is the idea of the deer and the health of the deer in mm -hmm. Miyajima and Nara, our two famous deer destinations. Um, and in Nara, there's been some cases like pointed out in this newspaper article about deer um, being endangered by cars because people mm. were feeding them outside the cars. And so then they wander into traffic kind of looking for the next yes. snack, yeah. uh, feeding them the deer senbei, which has no nutritional value, mm. but it's something tourists want to do. We actually had that in Miyajima and we stopped it. Um, mm. So the rule now is don't feed them. But there has been kind of back and forth about whether locals should feed them natural things in the forest, right. get them used to eating in the forest, hanging mm -hmm. out in the forest. So it's it's more complex than you realize. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they are part of the natural system. They are on the sacred island, sacred site in Nara. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to respect the animals and not feed them, but they are eating all the trash and often die because they eat plastic. So it is yeah. part of the tourism problem, right? Mm. So, yeah, it's an yeah. yeah. interesting issue worth exploring a little bit more. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Um, on, a, on a different track, I have come across a really wonderful uh, new business for me uh, based in Tokyo called Musibi Kiln. Have you heard of them, Musibi Kiln? I don't think so. Tell me more about this. So I just I've come across it because I'm always looking for good companies with these uh, beautifully written English narratives that really brand, you know, bridge between what the artisans are doing, why it's of value um, and sustainability. And this is really a company worth uh, having. Mm -hmm. They also do a wonderful blog and journal. Um, mm -hmm sign up for where they talk about the artisans as well as their products. Uh, they say they don't feature any uh, products which don't have a clear connection um, to how it's made or the, mm -hmm. of the trade or supporting local. Right. So it's really fantastic to uh, be able to find a company like this. That's brilliant. So that's real transparency then. So you know where it's come from, how it was made, who it was made by. And the, the really good quality English copy. This mm -hmm. is something we often talk about in consulting with destinations. You have yes. a beautiful page in Japanese. You cannot just use translation software. You <laughs> have to get someone who writes yes. content well mm. and, and really conveys the message. It's so different from a direct translation. And uh, this yeah. this website so beautifully done, so it's nice. Fantastic, to see. great example, raising the bar for everybody. Yes, yes. yes. 
Another uh, local product I get a monthly box from, which I want to shout out to, is Vegan Osaka. They have amazing vegan cheeses. Now, this Ooh. is rare in Japan. You rarely see any vegan cheeses or meat alternatives uh, they have. This is me cooking up uh, some of the meat alternatives. It was like a stir fry, hmm. like plant-based stir fry. It was so good. And uh, yeah, I mean, one of the challenges they have is to, the packaging. Mm -hmm. Everything they send, it kind of has to still be in plastic because yeah. they, you have cheese. How do you package it without plastic? If anybody has a good mm -hmm. idea, I'm always trying to give them recommendations. Um, right. one, one idea we had, which we're going to try out, is I send them my containers, my mm -hmm. containers, or they send me the first one, and I wash it and send it back. And then they yeah. send it. I mean, it's a little labor intensive hmm. for the customer, but that could be an idea. But if you have yeah. any other ideas, please let me know. Um, but I was also looking at packaging for toothpaste. Toothpaste huh. packaging drives me crazy. This single use plastic that doesn't go anywhere. You can't recycle it, right? So yes. Here, I've been looking for, and I've tried some of these. So you have a biodegradable compostable paper bag version where I love to see that. And mm -hmm. it doesn't have plastic inside. It has a, a wax liner. So I've yeah. tried that. That's a good option. Um, or in glass and aluminum, both of them can be recycled. In yes. Japan. We have quite ra high rates of those. Um, so instead of plastic, which just goes to landfill or it's incinerated, and mm -hmm. often it can't be incinerated because it has mm -hmm. residue inside, so it has to be landfill. This is something most consumers don't know, right? Yeah. So yeah. just thinking about the products you use all the time, what might be a better packaging yeah. option? And quite yeah. often you get higher value content of the actual product is better as well, right? I think so. Yeah. I mean, I've got the, the, the sort of one you showed that was um, in the aluminum tin, I think. Um, so it's a French brand, the one I use. I can't quite remember the name, but um, yeah, it, it's great. And it's actually really good for taking um, when you're sort of traveling and stuff as well, because it's not going to leak or spur anywhere. It's a dry powder. Um, so it, yeah, and it works just as well. Yeah, awesome. Mm. I've been trying to convert my family. This is another <laughs> another issue. Like I'm willing to make these sacrifices yes. in, in my habits and change yep. things. And my my family's yeah. often like, "What? What is go? Where did the toothpaste go? Yes. <laughs> it's powder. Now you dip your toothbrush in it. No, yeah, mm, yeah. It's an it's, adjustment there, but that's good is. learning as well. You know, it is. It's <laughs> we need these sort of behavioral nudges, right? Of sort of making it the easy choice for people but also there's there's a mindset shift as well that comes with any of these things isn't there that isn't always easy <laughs> it's for us where it's our passion yep no yeah. problem at all but yeah it, it yes i have the same issue in my family i think sort of convincing them sometimes of uh, why are we doing this and yeah okay yeah uh, home composting was a was a big one right at our house um i dig it into the garden you know and then, but mm. that was a big adjustment you know yep. like don't throw it in the trash like put it yep. in the compost and uh yeah yes. and then now we're all used to it it just it took same. a little time to yes. develop that that mindset yep. change <laughs> Ooh, and maybe so related to that um my daughter as uh, part of one of her um subjects at school was uh, i think in biology they were looking at um organic fertilizers and options um sort of alternatives to chemical fertilizers and she did an experiment um using banana water so basically they were um just anytime we ate a banana the peel went in a jar we topped up the jar with water um, and then it sort of soaks out um the nutrients from the banana skins and then we've been using that i've been using it on my sort of pot plants in the house and they're looking great it's really actually so simple so we've got the the compost box that everything else goes in but the banana skins we've just been putting in um the uh th this jar with water and it seems to be a, a, a good one so oh, i've never heard of that that's a good option yeah a nice easy fix if you're trying Super new things. easy yeah if you're not not worried about slime or like just the the conceiving of putting banana peels in water can can be a hurdle right it's it's a bit weird <laughs> but actually it's it's it doesn't smell i was worried it might but i just use a glass jar with a good seal 
um, on the lid. It doesn't smell at all. Um, and then when I put it on the plants, I then follow with just with a bit of water to just sort of wash it down into the soil. Um, and yeah, the plants seem very, very happy with it. So that's good. Good. Uh, was there anything else we wanted to talk about today on your list? I, I think I've covered think so. all of mine. I'm adding the links for Musubi Kiln and uh, Same Sex Marriage News. Thanks for yes. adding that, Tova. No problem. No, that's wonderful. Okay. So we'll, we'll try to have another talk maybe later this month. Yep, or, we can do that. Yeah, yeah. All right. There's a lot going on in November. Uh, autumn colors are coming out. Yes, just for, for all the people watching as well, hopefully you're starting to see autumn colors, but also beautiful autumn vegetables. Get out there and enjoy your seasonal autumn vegetables. This is in Japan, they say the best time to eat in the year. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, oh, loving it. So we're we're enjoying the the kaki uh, persimmons at the moment. I'm eating those every day. They're just so good. So they're so good, fresh, and you can dry them, and they're yes. beautiful dried as well, right? Yeah, yeah, no, really good. All right. Well, thank you so much, Tova. Thanks for everyone for watching. Have a great month. We'll see you later. Take care. Thank you. Bye. At least that's the place